Hi everyone, I'm Sally Eves. It's a pleasure to be here with IBM in London with Steve Smith. Thank Welcome, you. Steve. Good to see you, Sally. Fantastic. And just to start us off today, we're diving into all things really the year of the partner. Steve, just a little bit about yourself first to start off, to introduce you to the audience. Yes, well, thank you. Um, so, Steve Smith, and I'm the general manager for service partners uh, in IBM's ecosystem. Um, that's actually a new title this year because we've just launched a brand new program focusing on the service motion, as we call it, which we'll talk a little bit more absolutely, about, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, that's having come from a background in IBM, predominantly in our software business and our cloud business, but now hopefully bringing some of those connections and some of that um, experience into the ecosystem as we look to scale. Fantastic. I love that. And you mentioned there about collaboration, such a strong investment in AI and hybrid cloud. And I said at the start, and Kate Woolley mentioned from IBM, didn't she? Really 2024 yeah. year of the partner. And you mentioned there so many kind of steps along this trajectory. So partner plus program, what's next? And you mentioned there the new service track. Let's dive into the new service track. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. I mean, we're really excited. We've actually been working on this for, well, upwards of a year now. Yes. Actually, I mean, we launched Partner Plus just over a year ago, about this time last yes. year, more or less, um, with a cell track, cell and service at the time, yeah. and a bill track. Um, and I think it's fair to say, given the scale that we had in the cell piece um, and the work we decided to do around embedding AI and ISVs, that's where the focus was. But we knew we had a gap with the service piece. Um, and that's something that we needed to think long and hard about, because I think even though many of our partners operate across multiple yes. options, um, this one needed a specific set of thought and um, I was going to say incentives. It's really more about the things that we're putting in place around technical expertise and around co-creation. Go back to the Absolutely. collaboration point Absolutely. you mentioned. So, you know, we've done a couple of things. We've broadened the scale. You know, originally this was a program that was really targeted at the top global systems yes. integrators. By the way, still very much is. Yes. But what we've done is expand that program out now to just over 200 partners. By the way, it's not limited to that. So this program is now open for business yes. and new service partners who want to come and join this ecosystem yes. are more than happy to do so. But that's where we've targeted our initial set of resources. Brilliant. And as I said, in, serve, in the Partner Plus track, um, what we've done is bring in at the different tiers some new benefits. That's probably yeah. a better way of describing it. So the two main ones, we've, we've obviously got um, investment around level four practitioner certification and enablement. Again, a key feature of last year's launch was making all of the enablement that's available to IBM as available to our partners. Here, obviously, with service partners, we're talking about implementation and going perhaps a step further than just understanding this is really about deploying the technology at scale so it's a different type of investment but that again available to all of those at the right tier levels um, and then something i'm really excited about which is the the solution accelerator team this is around co-creation in much the way for those of you who are familiar at all with ibm's sort of methodology client engineering um, garage kind Definitely. of uh, approach it's about that co-creation but this time with our partners looking at joint go to market where we can infuse our technology to build a solution that's going to change it out come for a client. But again, back to how we can scale that. And then a success team internally within IBM whose sole purpose is to look at disseminating that uh, solution across the IBM Salesforce so that we can bring the power of IBM to the benefit of our partners and our clients. Fantastic. I love that. And I think also reminds me again, when you started this journey again back in January with Partner Plus, how many people have been through the education offer on this as well? I think I saw earlier about 130,000 people. Yes, no, absolutely. It's That's huge in terms of democratizing assets. Yeah. And I think it shows that there was a pent up demand, yes, yes, right? Definitely. I mean, I think candidly, you know, much of what we've done with Partner Plus and indeed with the service track, I should just say the service track has been defined by our service partners the benefits. You know, we went out and consulted uh, extensively as to the kinds of things that they were looking for. Of course, we've taken a look at the market as well, right? We want to listen and see what's successful out there. Um, but I think that there was, yes, a big appetite for access, not just to the enablement, but actually to the technology itself, the hands-on experience, the ability to go build and test uh, uh, and then deploy. So that combined with, you know, aligning our teams so that we can help build out those skills, I think is a you know, recipe for success. And we're hoping that we'll see lots of engagement. Indeed, indeed. And success at scale too, I think absolutely critically on this. And maybe another example of what's going on with IBM today, for example, we saw it on, on the floor here at the Innovation we Lab. We've got big kind of ecosystem 
the networking event and very much that active listening that you were talking about there and what is the reaction you're seeing so, so far to service the service track but also this trajectory of innovation we've been talking well, about you know I, you have to go back to kind of like um you know people listen because there's something of value in this you would hope right and if we just go back to the core strategy you know since arvin's come on board the clarity i would like to think that we've managed to provide in terms of this hybrid cloud Indeed. and ai focus obviously um you know we whether we were there before or after what the fact is these are the topics that matter to the clients that we engage with um and they're really difficult problems right and again that's something that i think kind of differentiates ibm in terms of you know our ability to address some of these tough challenges exactly. given you know our history and and again the kind of markets that we're working highly regulated exactly. um financial services government sectors these kinds of things exactly. um but you know once you put that together and say you are now relevant right relevant in a real meaningful way yeah. from a technology standpoint it's about of course you know the biggest single challenge that most of our collective clients are facing is the skills yes. Um, yes. the ability yeah. to actually deliver Absolutely. the outcomes that many of the board members are looking for and of course that's where the service partners come in it's you know marriage made in heaven in terms of bringing that technology together exactly. with the scale that our service partners can provide um, and when you get it right, where you do the right kind of training, the right kind of certification, um, I think there are some unique differentiators there. And that's why I think that there's a lot more listening to IBM. I mean, you can fortunately see it in terms of the market reaction, in terms of kind of our trajectory and some of Absolutely. the way, you know, combining um, at its very core, you know, that red hot open exactly. uh, value proposition with some of the now groundbreaking, and I would say also unique differentiators in our AI offering, specifically exactly. around things like governance, definitely, definitely. Um, some of the new models, and something new that's kind of creeping in as well, which is also kind of some of the cost implications mm -hmm. of actually doing yes. some of these types of projects. And again, I think we feel that both from a technology and a partnership standpoint, exactly. there's a commercial proposition here that we can bring that allows customers perhaps not always to have to make all of the individual exactly. investments themselves, but work with a very, very mature ecosystem like ours with some of the, you know, the big partners that we work with and also yeah. some of the more local partners uh, at a local level um, that give them the confidence that we can deliver. I think that's very true. I think you also kind of show that with power of partnerships as well. Like SAP, another recent example. Huge, yeah. CCS is such a range and again, different variety of partners too, both big enterprise level and as you're saying, smaller local level too, and lots of different examples of use cases of application too. And you mentioned there about some kind of return on investment. Isn't it something like six to eight dollars return per one dollar yeah, invested? Something like that. No, no, huge. no, you're spot on. But yeah. I think it's fair to say that that's probably at the kind of low yes, end yes, of the spectrum. Of course. Right? Yeah. Um, not that I want to, you know, frighten of any of our clients out there, but <laughs> candidly, these you know, these projects can be quite complex to, indeed, to deploy. Indeed. But yes, for our service partners, certainly that's where the attraction yep. comes, right? And that's why things like, as I said, governance, which right now we'd like to think that we've kind Absolutely. of got a market leadership position on, but brings with it a whole set of dynamics around cultural change, exactly. around, as I said, you know, when you're working in highly regulated industries, you know, there's... IBM is one of the very few vendors, you know, prepared to indemnify, right, the exactly. uh, technology exactly. and some of the outcomes where we're using our technology in AI. And these are really important factors, right? Um, and I think why, again, um, service partners are looking to IBM, perhaps in a way that they once did, um, to help deliver what is truly a market leading proposition. Absolutely. You mentioned there about AI governance. In fact, there's a, there's a piece yeah. in the video going out on that very subject, a big deep Excellent. dive, so okay. very close to heart, that one. Yeah. But uh, AI Alliance, your work with partners there, I think also substantiates everything around the AI governance piece as well. So I think that's really interesting. But you mentioned there about different challenges organisations are facing. And again, I think organisational size, vertical makes a difference there too. Yeah. And for many organisations dealing with these foundation models, so kind of moving to generative AI in particular, Obviously, there's a huge opportunity there, but there's big challenges. I think some of them are existing ones, so things around integration, but, but other things like data lineage, for example, massively important, yes. where, where the governance piece I think, really, really yes. comes into its own. But if you look at all of that, kind of that layer of responsible AI sits under everything, doesn't it? And I wonder if we could kind of drill into that a little bit more about why that has to sit as the kind of catalyst, the, the underpinning of all the innovation we're talking about here and how you're supporting that too. Yeah, well, I think, again, at the end of the day, uh, in these spaces, particularly where you're starting to break new ground, yes. right? Um, whilst I think, you know, most people, whether they be in the boardroom or whether they be end users, 
kind of have a version of what they think is the art of the possible, absolutely. AI. I think most also have quite a clear view about what some of the pitfalls are, yeah. right? I mean, there are now some quite widely available uh, examples, right? Indeed, indeed. Perhaps let's just say without going into detail. Where <laughs> Many flavors. Are, yeah. yeah, where things haven't gone quite to plan. <laughs> yes, or exactly, yes. um, and of course, you know, whilst that's, you know, really important in terms of the impact it can have on your clients and, and, and the whole trust piece, yes. I mean, you lose a client or, or have a, a scenario like that and, you know, you're Absolutely. going to struggle to recover Absolutely. from that for, for years, possibly. Um, not to talk of government type entities where it's just not possible, exactly. right? To, exactly. um, the, the, it, there are some very sensitive areas, obviously, where this can be, be a problem. So I think, you know, IBM, I think over the years, over its hundred plus years of existence, you know, as a brand has always had a fairly strong association with trust yes. as kind of um, one of our defining um, um, differentiators. And I think that's also something else that comes to the fore when you're looking to partner. Um, with, as you said, either with local partners who already have built trust with a client or with a certain set of the market or one of the global players. Yeah. I mean, again, you've seen recent announcements. We've just recently announced um, a new workforce automation um, AI related solution with EY, um, not to speak of, you know, some customer um, focused assistant type uh, engagements with NTT. I mean, I could go on. Absolutely. Many of these will come and there'll, yes. there'll be more. You, you mentioned the SAP one, which is obviously go, embedding the technology yes. with our technology partners. Um, but without that trust piece and without that ability to, to roll back or to understand exactly what's been going on or how you arrived at a certain set of, of outcomes, um, I think many customers just won't take the step forward. Right. So there's lots of experimentation going on right now. I think, as I said, art of the possible is one thing. But when you deploy something yes. at scale in production, so to speak, or um, you have to be bulletproof. Right. And uh, as I said, I think that's something that we feel that by having focus, not just in terms of the way we built out the technology that provides either our own clients with their use of the technology or uh, our service partners, to give that transparency exactly exactly right? and when you've got that then i think you know at least it provides clients with the opportunity to make the choices that they indeed want. i think particularly looking at the ai governance piece as well is that move beyond the transparency around it to kind of demonstrable accountability as yeah. well around that yeah. particularly when you look at what's happening with the governance piece and legislation changes across geographies and things like that as well plus personal accountability for c-suite level so it's it's a huge area that's evolving yeah. all the time and complexity involved in that this can make a much bigger difference and kind of take away some of the, the overburden on that and make it actually a catalyst for innovation rather than restrictions. I think it's a fascinating area. I mean, if you don't, I think if you don't provide that, then as I said, I think the overhead and the cost okay. and the time involved for clients to actually achieve that level exactly. of, exactly. you know, that industrial level proof of, of, of um, trust um, and governance. The, the cost implications are huge, right? And exactly. I mean, you know, part of what we're here to do is to, to make, or to give our clients the ability to get to those outcomes faster, but exactly. in that kind of trusted way. So. Definitely. And I mentioned earlier, came in here on the tube, and mind the gap is ringing in my ears. And <laughs> my ter excuse a terrible pun, but, but it's true, I think, with this as well. When you look at AI, there's so much like, positive intention, isn't there? And particularly when it comes to we must we must embed ethics, we must do the governance piece right. But the actual implementation of that, that can be where the struggle comes. And I think the, the kind of what's next family, I think, around that is a great way of that end, end life cycle, plus both the structured and unstructured models too, which is also super important. I mean, that is, again, at the core of our yeah, value proposition, exactly. right? But just as much at the core is the ability for our clients or our partners to be able to select components. Exactly. Right? exactly. That's the beauty of hybrid. That's the beauty of yep. building on open technologies. Yes, That's indeed. the beauty of kind of IBM's um, value prop as it stands right now is there is still the ability to kind of take or pick the pieces of this equation. But, but you said, I mean, why we're so focused on service is because you know, none of these technologies get deployed without expertise. Yep. Skills. And some of our very largest clients, of course, have built up some of yes. that yep. and are perfectly capable of delivering some of this on their own. But in many cases, um, in some of these new areas, that's not necessarily what they want to do. Exactly. They don't want to take that on board. Uh, they'd rather be focused on their core business, right? Yes. Uh, and what it is that they're going to use that technology for exactly. rather than actually building it. And so that, you know, that kind of three way play between the client, the service partner in yep. terms of deployment and um, the core technology. Um, is where the magic happens. Fantastic. And to end it off, 
we'll go back to magic. Great, great word in technology, <laughs> I think, isn't it? So, yeah, although it's not magic, <laughs> as we know, right? <laughs> underneath it, underneath it, it's the magic. It's the stuff you don't see, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, no, exactly, yes. exactly. So let's focus on a, on a really positive ending. We've talked about some of the challenges, but also a lot here about how to really overcome them. So mm-hmm. if we put all of this together, where would you describe like the trajectory of innovation fueled by this kind of age of convergence we're in, with Gen AI at the heart of that? But what are you seeing as the biggest benefits for organisations kind of embracing this journey? And I know people talk about efficiency a lot and things like that, yeah. but obviously it's sustainability, multiple areas we can make a difference here. So perhaps to end it, where are you seeing the biggest well, benefits? I mean, right now, the, the benefits are fairly pretty concentrated in like three or four areas. You know, yes. you, I mean, as soon as you mention the word automation, you know, people think about productivity, exactly. they think potentially exactly. about savings. But this really, back to the point I just made about clients being able to focus on their core business, I don't think they really want to build up IT organizations that have hundreds or thousands of people doing these kind of repetitive tasks, indeed, right? Indeed. They do want those people focused on some of the innovation and some of the um, the ability to try new things Absolutely. and look at where they can impact their clients. And so all that automation in fueled by AI does is allow the ability to free up Absolutely. and release some of those resources for other, shall we say, higher value-based type Indeed, approaches. Indeed, definitely, definitely. I Hold mentioned, the you know, the, the EY example. Um, I'd also talk about IBM. I mean. Yes. One of the areas where we're seeing, undoubtedly, um, you know, as we use and deploy what's next ourselves internally, yeah, of one course. of the biggest benefits is in HR. Yes. Um, and again, it's not about replacing HR um, functions. It's about freeing them up from the repetitive yeah. tasks. The, the how do you go hire someone? How do you bring Absolutely. someone on board? How do you set up their you know next set of salary increases or what have you? To looking more at what kind of training does this person need? How do we get smarter about deciding what are the right skills and profiles for certain new jobs exactly. that are coming up, or exactly. whether that be you know external hiring? Mm-hmm. So HR, for sure, is a, 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 a big area where we're seeing some benefits ourselves, but also we're working with our clients. We talked about automation. You mentioned sustainability. Um, we mentioned the word scale a couple absolutely, of times. I mean, absolutely. if ever there was a, an area that Indeed. kind of requires the need to okay. act at scale, or to, to sort of understand the landscape and pull together disparate pieces of information Absolutely. in a way that you know can be very, very complex, um, but also with the potential for huge ability to reinvest in terms of Absolutely. some of those savings. So sustainability. But listen, let's get back to probably the core of what most of our clients started down the AI path with was that customer interaction, the marketing sales Absolutely. kind of piece. Now, it started with the whole kind of assistant thing. Um, sorry, the assistant thing is a terrible term, but you know, pretty rudimentary. Yeah. I mean, that's not really what we're in IBM Understood. are talking yeah. about as being the value here, because the whole difference between you know that kind of search engine vis-a-vis something that actually is learning, is adapting, Absolutely. and can allow you to engage the client um, in a in a different let's, potentially less predictable fashion, but one that hopefully will lead to some better returns for our clients. That's probably the one where most of the projects that we're seeing are going going live right now. But broadly speaking, it's those those three or four areas where we're seeing the biggest return. And listen, no doubt they will uh, develop as we go forward. Absolutely. Use cases let to be invented, as I say. Uh, oh, no, I'm sure there are hundreds. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. See, I know we need to bring it to get to an end here. And again, we talk about magic, but there's so much substance under the, under, yeah, under the hood here, right, as I like to is. say. Yeah. And again, lunar year, isn't it? Year of the dragon. I'm going to go back to that blog piece that almost inspired this conversation. Year of the partner. It's 2024, isn't it? It really is. Ecosystem makes a difference. Steve, thank you so much for joining My us pleasure. today. Pleasure to join you and thank you all for watching and tuning in too. We'll be back soon. Thank you very much. Thanks very much.